I'm Nicole and Rebecca from conquerbooks.com and today we're talking about our most recent read The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. Oh great god of Nicole's book cave bestow favor on our blog let our microphones work properly and our camera batteries never run dry. It is time let this blood sacrifice please you oh god. Wait Nicole According to The Raven by Anne Leckie, most small gods will be appeased by a simple food offering. Are you sure? The Raven preferred a blood sacrifice. Yeah, but not this god. Besides, that's a cheese knife. The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie is a book about humans, but it's equally a book about gods and goddesses. And she has a really interesting take on how she uses gods in her world building. They're often um, not of the typical, um, you know, Greek pantheon, you know, Zeus, all powerful and knowing. These gods have limitations where their spoken word makes things come true, but they have to be careful about what they say. Otherwise, they could um, expire their energy trying to make something impossible happen. And they spend a lot of their time getting connected with humans over generations, which I like. Some of the criticism of Anne Leckie's earlier books was that the style is kind of hard to engage in. And I think that probably that was that is her personal style, and so it carried over into these further books. And it was a little difficult to get involved in until you started really learning about the gods themselves. That was the most fascinating part of mm -hmm. the story, I thought. Yeah, it really took you in once you got to know the gods' personalities to see how they made their decisions and to see what they thought of humanity. Um, but like Nicole mentioned, the style is very distinct. There's a strong voice, um, I feel like, for all the characters, but the um, perspective was different. It definitely had first person mm -hmm. and second person, which we were talking, we don't think either of us have ever read a book in second person before. No, there's not very many out there. It's a difficult uh, point of view to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this one's got first person, second person, and maybe arguably third person, at least a little mm -hmm. bit. You're, the story is being told from the point of view of a god. That's the I we're talking about. I did this. And then he's watching the one of the characters named Iolo, um, and he's saying you. He, so he's talking about Iolo, you did this, you did that. So it's an I, a you, and a he. The he is going to be um, one of the other main characters named Mawat, the mm -hmm. king, sort of. Yeah, there were also no chapters, which was different. Um, there yeah. was a little raven picture that broke up each section when switching back and forth between first and second person. Um, and at times I thought that I wanted a break to know when I was done reading a chapter, um, but it also, it did keep you rolling and you kind of got a rhythm that she would talk about Iolo and then she would talk about um, the god and then the god might tell us a story about something from his history. And she, I think didn't have a huge focus on world building. It felt like a pretty generic um, fantasy setting. Um, you know, you have a, a forest, you have this, um, you know, medieval style town, but she did focus a lot on history of gods and rules around gods and um, what they can and cannot do. And I think that was her real strong point in this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the synopsis on the front of the book talks about Mawat and Iolo as the main characters of this book. And that's who we start with, who we're watching, but the more that the story builds up around the gods, you see that the story is at least 50%, maybe more, about the gods themselves. Uh, the main god that we're talking about is the raven, and we've also got um, Strength and Patience of the Hill, and the Myriad, and a couple of smaller names that come up here and there. Yeah, and they have their own personalities. The raven is very calculating. He is trying to manipulate people. He is trying to gather power. Strength and patience of the hill has this long history. Um, it's a rock. Has this long history of earth and being in the seabed. And then as the seabed rises and changes, and then as glaciers move over him, he just has this expansive knowledge of the world. Um, but he can't move far dis distances. So he um, gets his first taste of the world outside of his small scope when he meets humans for the first time and he also talks about um, ancient gods and some of the power that they had and so he feels very um, like he doesn't have a lot of power because he's stuck in this small place but you understand over time that he 
ha has this great thought behind everything that he does and that's his real strength. The raven has what's called raven's lease. And that's like um, the ravens go between the person who tells the people of the world what the raven wants done. And every raven's lease gets these benefits and you know, um, according to the station of the office, but they have to kill themselves as sacrifice to the raven. And there's a mystery starting off the book because the previous raven's lease is gone missing. So Mawat is the hare. He's supposed to be the next raven's lease. And he's asking this question, where is his father and why didn't his father sacrifice himself? We come into Mawat and Deal entering the city and they immediately find that somebody is on the throne who's not supposed to be, um, which is uh, Mawat's uncle, Hibal. Uh, and so a lot of the story is based around the mystery of where did Mawat's father disappear to. Mawat is accompanied by Iolo, who is described as a warrior in the synopsis. And I, I went into the book picturing Iolo immediately as like this big beefing warrior who walks around in armor and a sword. <laughs> and that's not who he is. I would say he's more of an informant. He's not, you know, mm -hmm. smashing people left and right at all. Yeah, and Iolo has a very nice character. I yeah. think that it was a bit of a flaw, though, that he was almost too perfect. He always had this great reasoning, this wisdom, and um, Iolo doesn't really make mistakes. Mawat, on the other hand, makes a lot of them. Um, he has a big temper, and so um, there's a nice dynamic between the two of them, but I wish Iolo had been a little bit more relatable, though Iolo does have a very big secret that I think that you'll enjoy as you read the book. Yolo is a nice, a nice character. Like I liked Yolo's character. I think the greatest character arc probably comes from the strength and patience of the hill. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my favorite character of the whole book. And probably <laughs> the first time your favorite character is a rock, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, it's a good read. I think that you'll enjoy this if you read a lot of fantasy. The second person perspective makes. Um, it gives it a different feel as far yeah. as fantasy goes. She really takes you on a slow ride, which I think is part of the reason she didn't use chapters. Is it's just this very smooth build. You know, you don't have these choppy action sequences. Um, so the beginning of the book, I think, is 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 rather sparse. Um, but by the time you get to the end of the book, she's built something that you can see the landscape of, um, and it makes it worthwhile. Yeah, there's some good surprises, there's uh, some good mysteries, and um, I do think that this is, you know, something that people are going to be talking about a long time because of Anne Leckie's success with her previous books as well. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to know more about Anne Leckie, we put up a, an in-depth blog post about her past books and how she got into her writing career. You can check that out on our Facebook page or our website, conquerbooks.com. Uh, she's an interesting character. We've also got a YouTube site um, that we have a lot of fun with, so you should check that out as well. We really love to talk about books. And our next book coming up for next month is going to be The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. I'm really excited about this because I read one of Hurley's um, earlier books, The Stars Are Legion, and I was super impressed by the world building in that, and she had a good, strong voice as well. Um, but in The Light Brigade, there is a war against Mars and soldiers are turned into light and sent there quickly, but they notice that there's something different about these soldiers after the fact. So read along with us. We'll be reading The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley um, in April. Bye.